All right, so the bridge, Kukukuku Queens Bridge, the bridge, Kukukuku Queens Bridge. Uh, this is a super duper important song. Um, let's just talk about why. The B, okay? Um, and, and actually the lyrics too. So this is MC Shan produced by Marley Marl. Marley Marl, another maybe top five producer for me um, all time. Um, in terms of influence, importance, uh, you know, development, technical development, um, what he's done for making beats, okay? Uh, him and Shan recorded the song in uh, 1984, and it came out a little, a little while later. And the song is basically, you know, really uh, an ode to where they're from in Queens. Now... Uh, you love to hear the story again and again, you know, and, and, and really like this got taken by um, people in the Bronx as like saying that hip hop started in Queens, Queensbridge. And you know, KRS One and Boogie Down Productions took um, exception to this, and this started what was called the Bridge Wars. So it was a battle between Marley Marl and the Juice Crew, and. Um, Boogie Down Productions, where they released a series of disc records. The Bridge is Over, um, the, South, the South Bronx, Kill the Noise, etc. Um, Marley was one of the first to also realize the importance of, 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 of beef. Um, so he was seminal in what was called the Roxanne Wars, um, as well, same, same thing, and how that could sell records and monetize and brand an artist. Damn, that sun is bright right now, poking through. Uh, anyways, the song is just crazy important because it's the first time we hear the drum, uh, drum break and Peach the President by the Honey Drippers. This became a seminal, classic, super important drum sound in, in hip hop music. And Marley is so important because Marley Marl is the one who basically invented, let's say, pioneered the use of sampling drums. It happened, uh, he was a recording engineer, it happened by, by basically accident where he was sampling um, you know a riff and he accidentally caught the snare and he would hit hit the sample button you know because he's around some of the high the high technology at the time and hit this the trigger button and he heard the snare and he's like wow that's really that's really cool you know and he employed that on this song is the bridge if you watch the um, classic res recipes where he talks about making the bridge um, it's it's epic so you can see actually how he made it but he basically um, samples Impeach the President drum break and he chops it up, all the drum sounds, right? And then he, re and then he replays that actual drum break with the ghost notes and, and everything included in it. But he plays it at a slower tempo. Now this is before people were sampling drum breaks and then looping them over and over you know necessarily which was also around the time but it's so important because he f he figured out sampling drums chopping drums into individual sounds and then replaying those drums in this in this case it, uh, you know a diff uh, a sa the same drum break drum pattern uh but like that was just so important you know chopping sampling drums chopping them up and then replaying them you know, to make them make the drum, you know, break you want. Um, what he used is he sampled uh, the kick and snares to what's uh, uh, called a, a Korg SDD 2000. He used two of those, and then he triggered them from the uh, the 808. So with an 808, it's also um, has, is MIDI machine, meaning you can hook it up to like a synthesizer or something like that, and you can. You can play, you could use the uh, pads on, on it to trigger sounds from a synthesizer or from another, another um, you know, anything that has sounds on it. So, um, you know, this is a kind of became a common technique as we talk a little bit later um, with the SP1200 and um, the S950, some samplers and, and, and ways of doing this. But basically he would just... Um, you know, more or less use uh, uh, the 808 as the master to trigger sounds he'd sampled on, on, the, um, on the Korgs, okay? 
Um, and so this record's super important. You know, he he took a you know he reversed a horn sound. You know that you hear in this, and then and then the the drum sound. So this is seminal. As you hear the impeach the president drum breaks, it becomes just an essential drum sound, drum break sound. Um, he tells the story in the video where he gets actually into a little bit of beef with KRS-One um, in Boogie Down Productions and they stole his drum reel of drum sounds and then used them on some of their records, uh, which is interesting. Um, but after this record, so up until this time, people are using drum machines only, there's no sampling, they're replaying melodies on synths and stuff like that, using a lot more live instrumentation, shit starts to change, right? Um, you know, basically start, people start sampling. Um, they first start sampling drums, um, and then they start sampling drums to loop them, not just to chop them, but to loop them and, and loop a drum break, um, and then layer loops of melodies over it. So you start to really see through all this, you know, that we're kind of, now we start to see once people start sampling, we start to see how you know, beat making is an extension of, of DJ music, you know, which we'll learn about in the next use, unit. So people start chopping drums um, and programming them to make different patterns, um, which is kind of dope. Um, people start using slower stuff. So, you know, the break beats that were popular in the 70s, as we know, those they were fast, they were b-boy, b-girl break beats. They had a lot of, uh, you know, Latin instruments and flavor to them. You know, for, for this time, people start looking for those just kind of raw drum sounds, uh, slower drum breaks, you know, etc. Um, specifically with thumping low-end kicks and crackly snapping snares, okay? Um, you know, if you listen to, um, I know you got, you know, I know you got soul or you, or, you know, anything from paid in full, uh, you know, James Brown. You know, uh, you know, he was a signature in a lot of the early hip hop music and culture, but he became like incredible sample fodder in the mid '80s. Like everybody sampled James Brown, uh, him going uh, or like horn sounds or or anything. Um, and when they could, his drums, you know. Uh, but James Brown like sampled a ton in this time period. Very little to no live instrumentation. So before you had some guitars and you had some stuff like that, that's like total, to totally dead. <laughs> that's a sign of a real douche. You show off your douche cup and then you spill coffee, kofevi, all over yourself. See? This ain't, this, this is, I earned this. <laughs> um... Teaching, uh, <laughs> things start to get layered. So um, people start sampling sounds and layering, like layering vocal samples with drums, with um, you know different types of riffs, riffs and horn samples, etc. So they start l layering melodies, all that stuff. Um, everything's done on digital samplers, um, different types of samplers, and what really becomes like super super uber uber signature um, are the ultimate uh, breaks and beats records these were compilations of records that had drum breaks on them um, a lot of the early 70s style breaks but then a lot of stuff that was more suited towards production. So Funky Drummer, Impeach the President, uh, Synthetic Substitution, we'll be learning about a lot of these breaks in forthcoming um, units. But, you know, these records were literally like, they'd have like Ultimate Breaks and Beach, you know, I don't know, there's maybe 10 or 15 volumes, uh, would have, you know, 10 or 12 songs on it with, um, with drum breaks on them, you know, and all sampler, like, like sampling artists would like go to these to get their drum sounds, you know? And so like, if you actually listen to some of the, um, the breaks on these, the, the, the way that they recorded them and, um, you know, uh, from other records, 
like say there was a little scratch on a snare. Marley talks about this in, in, in making of the bridge, but there's a little scratch on your snare. You know, you could tell people who sampled the Impeach the President break from the Ultimate Breaks and Beats or UBB because everybody had that snare with that little crackle on it. You know what I'm saying? And that was cool. Like a lot of people will look down on that as like cheating using comps. And I'll talk about that later. Um, you know, that you need to get the original drum break, you know, but like the original impeach the president, uh, seven inch, um, you know, that's like a, I don't know, a couple hundred dollar record. Um, just cause it has that drum break on it and it's just become hard to find cause everybody wants a copy. You know, your boy got one. Uh, I love that too. Um, but anyways, just boasting. I'm not showing it, so maybe I don't have it. 